All right, so we've seen our compounded interest formula, and we've played with it for a few semesters now in math courses. And then we also know that if we take the compounding rate and we set it to continuous, it means it's compounding constantly, we end up with this formula as well. So what's happening here is this, the limit as our compounding approaches infinity because it's continuous. So the number of times it's compounded per year is infinite basically. And then we end up with this, which gives us this. So what we're going to show today is why this does become this. And to do that, we need this nice little limit for E. So E is the limit as H approaches infinity of this, or as H approaches zero of this. And so we're going to show this first, then convert it back to this. So if you already remember, you probably already know this, we can even go in this direction, that as H approaches infinity, this becomes zero and this becomes infinity. So now if we put a zero here, this is now zero, just like that. And this is infinity. So there you go, same thing. So now we just show this, which then we convert into this and we've got E. All right, so we already know the derivative for our, or if anything, is our difference quotient. It's the limit as H approaches zero of the difference quotient. So now what I've done is plugged in natural log for our functions. And we know that the derivative is one over X. So now, what we're doing right now, by the way, is proving E. So if we plug in one, we get the limit as H approaches zero, natural log of one plus H minus natural log of one is equal to one over one, so that's just one. So this right here is zero. This is obviously one. So we end up with the limit as H approaches zero of the natural log of one plus h over h equals one. And then we can even rewrite this again. The limit as h approaches zero of one over h, natural log of one plus h equals one. And then we can bring that one h in because it's a natural log. So the limit as h approaches zero of the natural log of one plus h over to the power of one over h. You see it forming up there? Huh? Huh? That's how these work. All they're doing is going, okay, well, how do I convert that into that? Well, that's a one. So if I put a one in here, I got my one plus h. And you just keep going from there and math likes to work out. So it works out. All right, now if we take an e to both sides because we have a nice continuous smooth function with e, we get that e will cancel. One plus h to the one over h equals e limit as h approaches zero. And there you have it. So the limit as h approaches zero of one plus h to the one over h, to the power of one over h is e. And then we already know that that is the limit as h approaches infinity of one plus one over h to the h. So all you're really doing is switching all the fractions into whole numbers. You're just flipping them, flipping the fra everything, flipping everything with an h in it and e. And there you go. Not, not quite, it's because there's a one that looks like flipping. All right, so now that we know that the limit as h approaches infinity of one plus h to the power of h is equal to e. So now you can see here that we're gonna be using that e to do this. So we've gotta convert this formula into something with that. So that's what we're going to start with. So I've already started modifying it. This is just to remind me how we modify it. So it makes it a lot quicker for us. So we have that to the power of n with a t. And then now we can take and replace that. So our r over n is going to be one over h. So we want r over n to equal one over h. Got it? All right, so now what we need to do to make my h a lot more prominent. There we go. So now what we need to do is convert it. We need that n to be hr, right? So that's what we do over here. We just do a quick little solve. So if we cross multiply, you'll see you get n equals rh, which is hr, and we plug it in. So now all we have to do is separate it. So we have the limit as h approaches infinity. Well, that p is just being multiplied to it. 1 plus 1 over h to the h, right? And then this whole thing is to the power of rt. And there you have it. So this is p. And then this right here is e to the rt. 
So what we're doing here is basically using the E definition. So the limit as N approaches infinity is basically making this, well, part of it anyways, the R over N, that's the rate divided by the number of compoundings, help us become E. That's it. So you can see the 1 plus R over N to the N becomes E to the R. All right. So now we're going to be using this compounded growth formula in a problem in the next video to talk about money. The most important thing in the world, right? It gets us everything we want. Not really, but it gets us a lot of things that we want.